Where are you going when you die? It's a good question. Some people say heaven, you know, you believe that whole heaven and hell kind of thing. I like to think heaven. Do you think God made man in his own image? As male and female, or do you believe in evolution? I believe that he, in all his intelligence, made evolution. So, one and the same, I think. Do you respect Jesus? Yeah, I respect the idea. He destroyed evolution in one moment. You know what he said? What Just he... one Bible verse, he said this. In the beginning, God made them male and female. So there's no evolution. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that. Did you hear that? He completely changed his mind with one sentence from Jesus. This is because he respects what Jesus said. And there are millions of people just like him. You don't need to get into arguments about evolution. Just quote the words of Jesus and then move directly to the conscience. Are you doing anything that you know that God would morally frown upon? Currently right now, probably not. Uh, but in the past, I think so. Yeah. I think I've done some things that would be considered, maybe by God, to be wrong. Yeah. How do you know that? Um, it's probably from the Ten Commandments. How many can you name? Uh, let's see. I got, uh, thou shalt not kill. Have you ever killed someone? No, I have not. Have you ever hated someone? Maybe for a brief moment. Yeah, the Bible says he who hates his brother is a murderer. That's how high God's standard oh, really? is. Did you know that? I did not know that, no. Okay, other commandments? Thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. Ever stolen something? Uh, I have. I think so what do you call someone who steals? Um, a thief. So what are you? A thief. Any, what about lying? Uh, is that one? Yes, the ninth commandment. You shall not be a false witness. Oh, yes. So how many lies do you think you've told? Oh. Countless. So what do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. So what are you? I'm a liar. A lying thief. Lying thief. What else? How many other commandments? Thou shalt not disobey. Thou shalt not disobey thy father and mother. Have you ever done that? Yes. Okay. Um, what about the seventh? You shall not commit adultery. Have you ever committed adultery? Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. I don't know how I can say this without sounding a little weird, but I'm always shocked when a young person says, they have committed adultery. And Jesus said, if you even look at a woman in lust, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Yeah. Familiar with number three, you shall not use God's name in vain? Yeah. Ever done that? Um, I believe so, yes. Okay, Leo, here's a summation. Are you ready? I'm not judging you, but you've just told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, <laughs> adulterer, and you've dishonored your parents. So if God judges you by those 10 commandments on Judgment Day, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? Or oh, guilty. Heaven or hell? Most likely hell. So what can you do to be saved from hell? Um, I believe it, in the Bible it says to repent. That won't help you. Do you know why? How, why? How come? Well, if you're in a court of law and you've committed a very serious crime, let's say you robbed a bank and shot a guard, and you say, Judge, I'm guilty, but I'm really sorry, and I won't do it again. That's the essence of repentance. The judge is going to say, you should be sorry, and of course you shouldn't do it again. You're going to jail. So if repentance can't help you in man's court, it's not going to help you in God's court on Judgment Day. Do you know what you need? What is that? Well, if you're in court and you're guilty and you've got no justification, what you do is you throw yourself on the mercy of the judge. Well, the Bible says God is rich in mercy to all that call upon him. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? He died. On the cross? On the cross, yeah. Okay, now, do you understand that? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Could you explain it to me? How does that help me 2,000 years later? Maybe I don't understand. <laughs> have you ever heard the gospel? Uh, bits and pieces of it in Mass. You know what the word gospel actually means? No, I don't. It means good news, and the good news is that Jesus Christ has abolished death. In the Old Testament, God promised to destroy death, and the New Testament it tells us how he did it. So I'm going to share the gospel with you. The gospel is this. God became a perfect, sinless human being 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Nazareth, who lived a perfect life, no sin, and he gave his life on the cross as a sacrifice for the sin of the world. Now, we all know that, but we don't know this. And Leo, if you can get a grip of this, it's going to change everything for you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. That's why he said, it is finished just before he died. He was saying, paid in full. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines, a judge will let you go if someone else pays them. Even though you're guilty, you'll say, someone's paid this fine, you're out of here. Even though you're guilty, you walk because someone paid your fine. Well, God can take the death sentence off you. 
He can let you live forever legally because Jesus paid the fine in full. Do you know what the Bible calls death? What it says death actually is? Um, I don't recall. It's wages. Have you ever heard? Yeah, wages. Ever heard the Bible verse, the wages of sin is death? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, the wages of sin is death. That means God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a heinous criminal that's murdered three women and he thinks lightly of it. The judge says, we're going to pay you in the death sentence. This is what you've earned. This is what you've deserved. This is your wages. And sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. Capital punishment. Your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin, even though we think lightly of it. You know, fornicating, lying, stealing, who doesn't do all that sort of stuff? But it's deadly serious. Now let's get back to the cross. Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood, rose from the dead, defeated death, and now God can freely give you everlasting life as a gift. You're not in debt to his law. There's no wrath upon you the moment you give your life to Christ, the moment you repent and trust in him. No doubt you are trusting in your goodness to save you on Judgment Day. You're thinking, oh, I'm not a bad person, you know, I'll get in. That's like a man who's going to jump out of a plane, and this is his plan. He's got no parachute. He's going to flap his arms and try and save himself. We'd say to that man, don't do that. It's not going to work. Just trust the parachute. Don't try and save yourself on Judgment Day. It's not going to work because you're not a good person. You're like the rest of us. You're a sinner. Just transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. And the second you do that, Leo, God promises he'll grant you everlasting life as a free gift, not because you're good, but because he's good and kind and rich in mercy. Is this making sense? Uh, it is, yeah. Following, yeah, I got it. Are you going to think about what we talked about today? Uh, yes, this was, this was very interesting. So at the moment, if you die in your sins, you'll be damned justly by God. You must repent and trust alone in Christ. When are you going to do that? Uh, I don't know. Let me speed it up for you. When are you going to die? I don't know. Could be tonight, couldn't it? Could be. Could be any moment. Yeah. 150,000 people die every 24 hours. Aneurysm in your sleep, heart attack. They say, oh, I thought Leo was healthy. He just had a heart attack and died. Horrible thought, but it could happen. So there's a sense of urgency. This isn't just who you're going to marry or what you're going to do for a job. This is where you're going to spend forever. So if you can detect it, there's an urgency in my tone. There's an earnestness, because I love you, I care about you. I don't want you to go to hell. That would horrify me. And the Bible says today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. And the minute you repent and trust Christ, he'll change your desires. You'll be born again, the Bible says, so that you love righteousness. Something in you will say, I want to please the God that gave me life. And that'll give you power over that habit of pornography and fornication, all the things that give us great pleasure, you'll say, no, I want to do what God says. If your dad gave you a Lamborghini, and he says, son, here's the car keys, this is a gift for you, and you drove on the wrong side of the road, and you drove drunk, he's got the right to take those keys off you. God's given you a Lamborghini and sex. You're made with the ability to have sex by God, and enjoy it within the confines of marriage. That's the right side of the road, and you don't want him to take the keys off you. He's given you life. You don't want him to take it back. Jesus said, he that saves his life will lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake shall save it. So give up. Give up the battle. So I surrender to God. God, please forgive me. And he'll change you on the inside. And that'll be your personal miracle because he'll cause you to love righteousness. So when are you going to repent and put your faith in Christ? Today. Can I pray with you? Uh, yes. Does that embarrass you? <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but okay. we can. Let's, let's do it. No one. Father, I pray for Leo. Thank you for his open heart today. I pray that this day he'll think of his secret sins and he'll tremble before you and find a place of genuine sorrow and true repentance. And this day may he see the cross in all its glory that he was loved by you enough for you to send a savior that his sins might be washed away and he be given everlasting life. Let him be born again this day with new heart and new desires all because of your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, do you have a Bible at home? Yes, I do. Yes. Can I give you a gift? Uh, for sure. Yeah. It's the fourth book of the New Testament. See that? <laughs> this is a booklet I wrote called Save Yourself Some Pain, filled with Christian principles. Leo, thank you for listening today. This is going to be as real to you as you are with the Lord. If you go away from here and get to pornography and fornication, nothing will happen. But if you're genuine in your repentance, God promises he'll reveal himself to you. Not in flashes or lightning, not in voices, but he'll change you on the inside radically so that you uh, 
you'll get the shock of your life because it's so real, okay? All right, then. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, this was really interesting. It was, uh, how do I say it? Sorry, I'm taking a minute to process this. Um, you've, you've explained it in a certain way that's kind of made me see it in a different perspective, you know? Well, that's, you've given joy to my heart. You know, the Bible says there's more joy in heaven over one sinner that repents than over 99 righteous persons. That's what Jesus said. And if you're truly repentant today, you've got heaven rejoicing because God's the lover of your soul. Real quick, here are four things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, The Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith and much more, The Starter Kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks, and the wildly popular book, Scientific Facts in the Bible, 100 Reasons to Believe the Bible is Supernatural in Origin. Available where good books are sold or at livingwaters.com. If you've never seen this video, is this where God definitely sinned? It's where a young guy thought he had me stumped by asking a question he thought couldn't be answered. You can watch it by clicking up to your left or going to our second YouTube channel called Just Witnessing.